Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. <laughs> Sugar cane. Wow, nice. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are off to Bungoma County. Eve, a maize farmer, has asked us to visit her, so we are off to see her. So, Carol, do you remember the directions? Not to worry. I'll call her and ask for directions. Hello? Yes, Eve. Yes, we are on our way. Oh, on the roadside. I think that's her. Okay. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Okay, 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 okay. Is that her? Yeah, I think it's her. Today we are in Kitinda village, Bungoma County. And we are visiting Evelyn and her family. The farm covers three acres. Eve. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. Yes, welcome. We talked on phone mm -hmm. and you told us about some challenges that you're facing. I'm a farmer of uh, this uh, maize. Challenges that comes across is a uh, striker. Ah, how uh, bad is a striker? Is it bad? Bad, mm -hmm. very bad. Uh -huh. And then uh, challenges on how to feed my cow. Uh -huh. uh, now we are here? Yes. And we've come with experts yes. to make sure that you're fully shaped up. Thank you. Then we start Welcome working. You. So, okay, <laughs> let's just step on it and go. Let's yes. go, let's, let's go, go, let's go. Mm. Let's pitch the tent and get ready to work. Striker weed, also known as witch weed, is a parasitic weed that attacks and reduces the yields of crops, including maize, sorghum, and millet. Plant Village, together with Toothpick Technology, have come up with a bioherbicide known as Kichawikin that uses fungus to stop striker weeds growing and in the end protect maize from being attacked. Dorcas! Yes, Tony. Thank you very much for the flowers. These are not flowers, Tony. What's this? This is a weed, a very destructive weed that affects the cereal crops. Maize, sorghum, millet. What's the name of it? It's known as a uh, striker weed or uh, witch weed in English. Witch weed? Yes. We normally call it a kayongo. Yes. In our language. So when it is in my farm, maize remains stuck. Yeah. Then they turn yellow in color, which means they will not give a good result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were you happy with your last no. harvest? No, no. It was terrible. It was very poor. It's very devastating weed. It can cause destruction up to 100% to a farmer. How can a farmer know that their maize has been affected by striker weed? One, yellowing of the leaves. Two, standard growth. And uh, three, you can get uh, your leaves uh, grow horizontally and it becomes shiny underneath. Yeah. Yes. How does the striker weed affect the maize? The striga seed is underground. So once a farmer plants the maize, this seed, striga seed, attaches itself to, with the roots of the crop. So it starts sucking the water, yes. fertilizer that was intended for the crop. This is the reason why your maize will grow to a certain level and stop growing. We have a solution yeah. known as Kichawi Kill. Kichawi? Uh, yes, Kichawi. The name Kichawi came from uh, a farm that is infested by striker, a farmer believes that it has been bewitched. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. So are you bewitched? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it right. is not the case, Evelyn. Uh -huh. <laughs> we are using a fungus to control the weed. It's a solution that has been tested and proven. What's the, na the name of the solution? Yeah. So it's called what? Kichawi Kill. Kichawi Kill. Kill. It looks like, how does it look like to you? I'm thinking mashed potatoes, <laughs> right? <laughs> what exactly is in there? Combination of cooked rice and a fungus. You cook rice, fungus. then you apply fungus. On the rice. Then the end result is this. Yes. For better results, put fertilizer in the hole first. Then one bottle top of Kichawi Kill. 
Then add your seed. Kichawi kill should not come in contact with the fertilizer, especially the inorganic ones, due to scorching. Do you cover it? Yeah, you cover. How does Kichawi kill work? When a farmer applies it, uh, this product works within 48 hours. When you plant your maize seed and apply Kichawi kill, it will stop the striker seed from attaching itself on the maize seed. Supposing uh, I've been using this this year, can I use it uh, in the next season or next year? For you to completely eliminate the mm -hmm. striker seeds, yeah. you have to use it for at least yeah. four seasons mm -hmm. continuously. This Kichawi? Yes. Where will I get this? It's here in the villages. We yes. have uh, trained farmers, mm -hmm. producers, mm -hmm. who can make for you the product. Yes. Yeah, so for you to access it, you just place an order, mm -hmm. then the producer can prepare it for you. Also, it's good to note that Kichawiki is only used during planting. Planting. Yes. You cannot use it as a top dress or a broadcasting. No, you use it in the planting oil or the mm -hmm. farrows. Is it the same as the fertilizer? No, Kichawikil is not a fertilizer. Kichawikil cannot control for lamiworm or yeah. any other weeds. Yeah. It only fights striga. Yes. Yes, so a farmer should uh, consider all the other good agricultural practices yes, yes. while yeah. using Kichawikil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yes. Fine. How efficient is it from the tests that you've done? Evelyn, we've done trials mm -hmm. uh, since 2017 and we got an increase in yields of 50 to 56 percent. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you see striga weed that has flowers in your farm, do not uproot as this is likely to spread the weed in other areas of your farm. Kichawi Kiel is currently available in Western Kenya because striga weed is commonly found in the region. Some farmers were trained and are now producers of Kichawi Kiel. Trained farmers can make the mixture of rice and fungus at home. When buying, the trained farmers explain how to use it and the amount needed per acre. When the rice is cool, put in the fungus. Shake well to ensure the fungus mixes with the rice. Keep it in a cool, dry place and keep shaking at least once a day for three to five days. Use all the mix after opening. Evelyn wants to buy dairy cows because she wants to sell milk and increase her income. Dairy farming can be very profitable, but these highly depend on keeping the right type of breeds and how you manage them. I have invited Catherine, a financial expert, to help us calculate how much Eve will need and how she can raise the money to buy the dairy cows. Why do you want the dairy cows? I start want, from there. I want to, to be a millionaire. By selling milk. Selling milk. Yeah. So the market of milk is very good around yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Do you have some savings? I don't have Why, why don't savings. you have savings? I normally fear to save in, in these groups. Mm -hmm. I normally think that they can just uh, take my with... money and run away with it. Uh -huh. mm. If you were to buy something, where do you normally get your money? I do sell my products, mm -hmm. like uh, sweet potatoes. So, uh, Catherine? Yes, Carol. She doesn't have any other source of, of getting, money. getting money except mm -hmm. her sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yes. How can we help our farmer? We help farmers to achieve their goals. And I'm happy for the dream that you have. You want to be a millionaire. And as a financial advisor and also a bank, I'm here to advise you and help you to be able to achieve your dream. First of all, you are supposed to open an account with the bank. Mm -hmm. There are two ways on how we can help you to get your dairy cows. Yes. One, you can save with us. Then two, you can take a loan from us. Yes. So when I talk about saving, yes. like you said, you sell sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes you sell yeah. mains. Yeah. The risk of just having your money in your house, yeah. anytime because of security purposes, somebody yes. can just get in your house and okay. go away with your money. Yes. So once we open an account with you, we can come up with a saving plan. Mm -hmm. In that maybe in one year, you can save an amount of money that can be able to cater for you to buy the dairy cows. Mm -hmm. One can cost about 90,000. 90. Mm -hmm. Prices of good dairy cows depends on the type of breed and where you buy them. 
In this case, we are using an example of a cow that costs 90,000 Kenya shillings to help Evelyn calculate how much loan or savings she will need to be able to afford such a cow. So we can come up with a saving plan on how you are going to save the 90,000 within a year. So we are going to take the 90,000, divide by the total number of months in a year. Mm -hmm. That's 12 months. Yeah, months. that is 12 months. Mm -hmm. Our farm will be saving 7,500. Mm -hmm. That is the savings per month. Mm -hmm. On weekly basis, you are supposed to ensure you save 1,875 bob every week. Mm -hmm. Then we can also take the amount that you are required to save in a particular month, mm -hmm. that is a month as 30 days. Mm -hmm. Then we will divide that month with 30, 30 days, days and tell you the amount that you are supposed to save each and every day. Our farm is supposed to ensure she saves at least 250 mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, she will have the 90,000 in our account mm. to purchase the dairy cows. Wow. Then the other plan, maybe you need those cows immediately. Mm -hmm. Now that is where we give you a loan. Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to get a loan mm -hmm. with us, the first thing we are supposed to do an assessment visit to your home. Mm -hmm. Then we see whatever you normally do, what kind of business you are doing. Mm -hmm. Then once we are done with that, we go to the documentation whereby mm -hmm. she is supposed to fill the application form. Mm -hmm. Then we will also give her an additional forms for the insurance. How does insurance come in? Mm -hmm. In case of death of that cow, the insurance is supposed to compensate on the amount that she had paid mm -hmm. and also clear the outstanding loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question mm -hmm. for you, Evelyn. Mm -hmm. How do you know how much money you're getting from the sweet potatoes? Oops. I have my records. Can Is it important when maybe you want to, to give a loan to farmers, are records very important? Yes, records are very important to see how the client is faring on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have now taken my loan. Yes. Mm, when should I start uh, repaying the loan? Okay, the loan you can pay in two ways, using other sources of funds that you are you have, like selling the sweet potatoes and you start paying the loan immediately. Yeah. Or you can request for a grace period of two months, then you start paying the loan. Let's say we've gotten the loan or you've saved and gotten your three dairy cows. Mm -hmm. Do you have a place for them to live? In this area, mm. our cows normally sleep. Out there? there. You just outside. make a pen for mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. I think we should go and see this, this yeah. shade that she's talking about. Surely, our dairy cows cannot sleep here. Let me see if Kamau can do something. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. Before the break, we saw how Kichawi Kill can be used to control striker weed and how you can finance dairy cows. And now, we want to find out all about fertilizer and how to prepare a good Kaliandra nursery. No time to waste? Back to work. Soil nutrition and management plays an important role in crop production. Knowing different options for soil improvement will help you make the right decision on how to boost soil fertility and productivity. Did you know that some of the farm residues can be used as fertilizer? Let's find out more from Liverson, visiting us today from Plant Village. So what do you plant on this particular piece of land? Mm -hmm. Maize and beans. Maize and, and beans. beans. Yes. So take us through the process. Before I clear the bush, after that I farrow. I look for satisfied seeds mm -hmm. like maize and beans from the aggravate. Mm -hmm. uh, then the fertilizer. Where do you get your fertilizer? In uh, aggravate. Aggravate. Yeah. Is it affordable? No, too high, expensive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we normally use our farmyard manure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We normally use that because of expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many bags do you have? I, ha I do have ST in one acre, um, 12. 90 kg or 50 kg? Yeah, 90 kg. 90 kg, 12 bags? 12 bags oh, in 12 one bags. acre. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So that is after you, are, you have added the fertilizer? I've added there the fertilizer, okay. but I've not top dressed again twice. Mm -hmm. We don't have Simply because mm -hmm. the, the input is expensive. Expensive. All right. Mm -hmm. 1290 kg bags. Yeah, and mm. the input is expensive. Mm. So if I calculate uh, profit, it's minimum because mm -hmm. uh, when I check on the cost of production, mm. it will be so high. So I'll advise you in um, using the best fertilizer. Yes. Uh, that is the biochar. Biochar. Yeah, biochar is a product from burning uh, the wood mm -hmm. uh, under high temperatures. Yeah. yeah. Burning wood burning. at high temperatures. Uh, at high temperatures mm -hmm. and a minimum. Uh, oxygen. You can just uh, prepare the biochar on your farm. Mm -hmm. So when you have just cleared your bush yeah. Yeah. or any plant residues in your farm, just go and dig a, a conical hole oh. on your farm. Take those plant residues, place them on that hole, start burning that, uh, uh, that plant residue. Mm -hmm. So when they are burning, when you see uh, the first batch has already burned, because it will form something like a black substance. Yes. Mm -hmm. When it's finished burning, add, a, add so another material. So it's layer after layer, layer after layer of layer material. Layer after layer of the material. Okay. So when you see uh, you have finished burning everything, mm -hmm. just take your water, go and uh, mm -hmm. spray on that uh, fire, mm -hmm. then it's, it, it goes off. It off yeah. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of water? Uh, not plenty of mm -hmm. water, just to put off the fire. So when you put off the fire, you have made your biology. Wow. It's simple. It's that simple. It's that so simple. you mean you, we are not going to buy? When you produce that thing in that conical hole, that is biochar. Biochar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we are going to add some nutrients into it. Oh. That is the NPK, nitrogen, mm -hmm. phosphorus, and uh, potassium. potassium. Yeah, we are mm -hmm. going to add it. So there's a special compound that is being added to that biochar. Mm -hmm. That is the amanda so that you can get the planting fertilizer oh. and the top dressing fertilizer. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for the biochar, you can produce it in your farm. Oh. Yeah. So how many bags do we need? You only need three bags per half an acre. You only need one bag for the biochar and uh, two bags for the planting fertilizer. 50 kg? 50 kg is all. After making your own biochar, buy Amanda NPK to add when planting. Use a handful of biochar and a handful of Amanda NPK to help get better yields. Biochar helps you cut cost by using less fertilizer. So our fertilizer will improve your soil pH and then you can also do the what is called uh, uh, dry planting. Mm. Because with the normal fertilizer you can't do uh, dry planting, the fertilizer will burn the seeds. Okay. Yeah. So for this one you can just add it into the hole, place your seeds, then wait for the rain. Mm -hmm. So when you have that biochar, first of all it's going to have uh, water retention on the soil mm -hmm. so that uh, when it rains the water does not drip. Uh, mm -hmm. deep down deep. into the soil mm -hmm. or does not evaporate easily, it yes. catches it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the char has uh, some properties. Mm -hmm. It has a honeycomb. Have you seen the honey yeah. that combs yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. those channels inside? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So when you burn this char, mm -hmm. it has some properties inside. When you check it under uh, a microscope, it has some those uh, holes inside. Yeah? Yeah. So when it rains, the water percolates in, the, in, in those mm -hmm. holes, holes, then it retains it. Mm -hmm. So when the roots of the plant are penetrating deep, they will be penetrate, penetrating inside, the, inside those holes, so it holds the soil moisture. Mm -hmm. And also, it prevents leaching of the uh, soil nutrients. Mm -hmm. Leaching of the soil nutrients is where calcium, uh, sodium, mm -hmm. they get leached into, in, inside, in, deep mm -hmm. into the soil, such that the plant can't reach those nutrients. Mm -hmm. So for this one, it holds those mm -hmm. nutrients, they can't be leached, yeah. okay? And your plant will become healthy by getting those nutrients, getting the water, and you'll get a bumper harvest. Ah, yeah, sure. okay. All right, nice. That's good. That is good. For more information on the biochar fertilizer, get in touch with iShamba. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. While most of the country will be dry in the coming week, we expect rains in the central and parts of the South Rift Valley, the northwestern tip of the country, spreading southwards into the western and Nyanza regions. Northeastern, Upper Eastern, Lower Eastern and the coastal region are expected to receive no rain or little rains of less than 5 mm. This includes Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Marsabit, Isiolo, Machakos, Kitui, Makueni, Kajiado, Tana River, Taita Taveta, Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. 
central Kenya will see very little to high rains ranging from 5 to 75 millimeters. Moranga, Kirinyaga, Embu and Nyeri will get no rain or little rains of less than 15 millimeters. Laikipia and Nyandara will have very little to high amounts of rainfall ranging from 5 to 75 millimeters. Nairobi and Kiambu will get no rains or little rains of less than 5 millimeters. North Rift, Central Rift and South Rift Valley will have little to high amounts of rainfall ranging from 5 to 110 millimeters. Most parts of West Pokot, Transoia, Marakwet, Wasingishu, Nandi, Baringo, Kericho, Nakuru and Bomet will see moderate to high amounts of rains ranging from 25 to 75 millimeters. Some parts of this region will receive rains of up to 110 millimeters. Trukana, Samburu and Narok will get little to moderate rains ranging from 5 to 50 millimeters. The western region will receive high amounts of rains of up to 110 millimeters. This includes Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega and Vihiga. Finally, the Nyanza region will expect moderate to high rainfall ranging from 25 to 75 millimeters. This includes Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Migori, Kisi and Nyamira. Farmers, collect rainwater using gutters, tanks, reservoirs, trenches and dams. This way you'll have water to irrigate your crops in the coming short rain season. Begin preparing your shamba for planting during the upcoming short rain season. Remove weeds and remains of the previous crop and identify crops that mature early. Continue harvesting mature fodder grass to give room for fresh growth. You can store them as silage or preserve as hay. For more farming news and information, get in touch with iShamba on 0711082606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Aliandra is one of the fodder shrubs that can be used to feed cows for better milk production. Knowing how to prepare nursery can help Eve to grow more for her cows as well as for business. We have Moses from Ikraf to show us how to prepare a fodder shrub nursery. Can the farmer make their own nursery? Why not? It is very easy. It takes have time. you ever made a nursery for yourself? Uh, no, no, mm -hmm. I've never. Why, why is it advisable for farmers to have their own nursery? One is uh, you'll know the source of the seedling, the source mm. of the seed, mm -hmm. and then you'll give it the proper management that uh, it requires when it is still in the nursery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll always get to quality seedlings, seedlings which yeah. are healthy, mm -hmm. and then the survival rate will also be high. Okay. Is it hard establishing a nursery for Kaliandra? It is not hard. Mm -hmm. yes. So how does a farmer go about it? Briefly describe it. Uh, briefly, first uh, you have to do your siting, where you want to put your nursery. Where do you recommend? I recommend in an open place with mm -hmm. a gentle slope. Mm -hmm. So once you get that place, uh, you clear the area, then you secure it, you fence it. To deter animals to come and browse on the seedlings. Now uh, you can dig the place. And how big should the nursery be? Depends on the number of seedlings you want to raise, depending on the cows that you have, the number of cows that you have. Mm -hmm. Because on average, one cow will require 400 to 500 Kaliandra seedlings for you to feed it consistently for one year. So mm -hmm. if you want to raise 500 seedlings, then the measurement should be one meter in width and mm -hmm. five meters in length. So how high are you raising the band? Uh, around 15 centimeters, not very high. Mm -hmm. yes. Raise the, the soil, mix it uh, thoroughly in a ratio of one, one, three. That is one part manure, which is well composted, mm -hmm. one part river sand, sand and then three parts topsoil. Soak your seeds overnight before planting in a nursery for faster germination. What, what, what is the spacing? From one row to the other, it should be 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. But for the seeds, yes. within the row, should be five centimeters apart. Ah, yes. ah, which is ah. very easy. After planting your seeds, cover with fine soil and put mulch to help retain moisture and then water it. <laughs> and then at what time should the seedling be transplanted? After I how long? It takes two to three months for you to, to transplant the Kaliandra seedlings. So you'll have to do your timing right, so that by the time the rain starts, then you're ready to, to, to transplant. transplant. When transplanting, plant your seedlings in a zigzag manner to have more trees in small space. Can I mix or do the, the 
the crop in the cropping. Do we in fact cropping with the with Kalyan. The mm-hmm. In fact, Kalyanda is a fertilizer crop. Mm-hmm. So if uh, you do intercropping with the other crop, maybe maize, because mm-hmm. Kalyanda fixes nitrogen to the soil. How long will I will I see that there's some changes? Uh, it takes a while for you to realize change. One, mm-hmm. after transplanting, uh, you will do your first pruning after nine months. Mm-hmm. And that one you cut it almost to the ground level. You just leave 15 centimeters from the ground. From the ground, the yes. height. That is the first pruning. Mm-hmm. So that it resprouts or it copices. It gives you more shoots. Mm-hmm. Then consequently, after that, then you'll be pruning it at one meter height. At one meter. Then you feed it to your cow. So mm-hmm. for you to start realizing change is in the second year. Mm-hmm. when you'll have enough biomass for you to feed your cow. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this change will be in terms of the, the health of the cow mm-hmm. and the milk that the cow produces. If you are feeding your cow with six kilograms of uh, fresh caliandra mm-hmm. per day, including other basal feeds, that is the grasses, the hay, the silage, yes. you mix with mm-hmm. caliandra. So you just take six kilos mm-hmm. and then mix uh, with your other basal feed. Mm-hmm. But uh, at a ratio, of uh, not more than 30 percent making up mm-hmm. of caliandra mm-hmm. and then the other one should be 70 percent. 70 percent. With consistent use of caliandra, expect milk increase of two liters per day per cow. Mm-hmm. But of course, apart from the volume of the milk, even the quality of the milk will change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but the all quality this, will be good. Mm-hmm. But all this requires good management. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. And then feeding the cow the way it is required. If you, you dry caliandra, then feed it three kilos of dried leaves. But if it is fresh, after wilting, then you feed it six kilograms. Now you're getting dairy cows. Yeah. So the expert has advised that they need a better structure. Mm. They need a, a pen that is covered. Yes, so uh, Shamba Ship Up team has been very busy and uh, we've got a surprise for you. Close okay. your eyes. We hope you like it. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. go. All right. Three, two, one. Open. open. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. What do you think? Mine. Yes. yes. Mine. Yes. yes. Wow. For your cows <laughs> and your three daily cows will have each wow. their own space. Yes. And very they'll be, happy. Yes, and they'll be very, oh, very safe here. Oh, my yeah? dreams. Mm-hmm. They'll be comfortable. They, they'll not be rained on. Thank you so much. Yes. Then I think our work here is done. Yes, our work is done. And, and we'll see, see you in, in the, the next Shamba. Shamba.